Welcome, this is a short video about a new web application known as Wolfram Alpha. Wolfram Alpha was launched just a few months ago and it's becoming an extremely useful and important tool for anybody using math or quantitative data, including students in calculus. And this is on the web at www.wolframalpha.com. Uh, what Wolfram Alpha is, is a computational knowledge engine and that's like a search engine such as Google, except when you give a question or a search query to Wolfram Alpha, instead of going through the entire web and pulling every page that might have something to do with your search term, Wolfram Alpha looks instead inside its own knowledge banks and gives you all the information that it knows about that's related to your search. For example, suppose I wanted to know about Indianapolis. I would go to the search bar here and type in Indianapolis and hit enter or click the equal sign and it will give me all kinds of information about the city including its population, where it is located on the map, what time it is, and even what the weather is there and any information about nearby cities. And if I wanted to compare two cities, say Indianapolis, Indianapolis and Nashville, Tennessee, I can enter in both search queries and it will pull up comparative data uh, both on the cities individually but also how they compare to each other. Here's a map and here's the distance between those two cities. There are all kinds of good videos about what Wolfram Alpha will do. And you can find these on YouTube or you can go to the watch overview video here at Wolfram Alpha. But what I want to take a few minutes here to discuss now is how Wolfram Alpha can be useful for students who are taking calculus. Wolfram Alpha can be used as a sort of simple calculator. I can type in, say, 12 plus 23 and hit return, and it will give me the answer in, uh, both in a numeral form, a number, and even a little visual representation. If I asked it to add one-half plus two-thirds, it will add the fractions and give it to me uh, either as a fraction or as a decimal or in any other kind of, or several other kinds of uh, formats as well. We can also do algebra symbolically on Wolfram Alpha. For example, if I wanted to factor an expression, so for example, factor uh, 6x squared minus 3x minus 3. Notice I'm just typing in regular English, uh, uses natural language to process these search queries. And hit enter. It will factor the expression and even give me some graphical information and some more advanced mathematical ideas related to that search query. I can also expand the opposite of factoring. If I want to expand, for example, x plus 2 to the 8th power, it doesn't take it too long to do so. We can also solve equations with Wolfram Alpha. Uh, for example, let's solve a simple linear equation just by typing solve 3x minus 14 equals 0. And Wolfram Alpha will come back with the answer 14 thirds and even give it to us as a graphical uh, version with the uh, root that we just found plotted on there. That's pretty nice, but there's actually more. Look at the link here that says show steps. Just as you might expect, if you click on that link, you're going to see all the intermediate steps that Wolfram Alpha did to get to the answer, including a checking step down here that shows that the solution is really correct. So this is nice, but again, sometimes the output can be a little more complicated than you might normally think. Let's go back and solve a more complicated equation, a quadratic, 3x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals 0. Now before I hit enter here, the way we would do this by hand is to use the quadratic formula. Pull out the quadratic formula and put in 3, negative 2, and negative 1 for A, B, and C, and then crank through the calculations. Now we hit enter here. Wolfram Alpha will come up with the correct solutions, negative 1 third and plus 1, and show you where those roots are on a graph. And you ask it to show our steps. Uh, you, the thing you notice is that the Wolfram Alpha does not use the quadratic formula straight away. What it does instead is complete the square which amounts to deriving the quadratic formula from scratch. Now, this is not what you would do. This is a correct solution, but it's probably more complicated than the other correct solution that we would normally come up with. So you have to be aware of looking at the steps on Wolfram Alpha, or even just the raw output from Wolfram Alpha, because sometimes it can be more complicated than what you expect. And another thing to watch out for when using Wolfram Alpha is that sometimes a query that sounds sensible to you won't make any sense to Wolfram Alpha, for example. Uh, suppose we want to evaluate the function y equals x squared at x equals 3. Now, we know what this means. We mean It means we're supposed to take the formula y equals x squared and replace x with a 3, and so we should get 9. But if I type evaluate y equals x squared at x equals 3, it sounds like exactly what I just said. 
Wolfram Alpha will come up with some strange things. It's a little hard to comprehend what exactly is happening here. Um, it's definitely not taking x squared and just plugging in x equals 3 and squaring the 3. And in some cases, uh, you can type in a simple search query that seems sensible to you, and you won't get any uh, information back at all. It will just say Wolfram Alpha cannot make sense of your query. So you have to be careful. There are some things that Wolfram Alpha won't do yet. But back to what Wolfram Alpha will do, you can also use Wolfram Alpha to make graphs. We saw some graphs in output a little earlier. So suppose I wanted to plot the function y equals x squared and look at it from x equals 0 to x equals 3. I would type in uh, that search query almost exactly the way I just set it, hit enter, and it would produce a plot for me. And you might also notice that uh, there's a link down here to download as a PDF, and if you click that link, it will give you a PDF version of this graph, which you can open up in Adobe Acrobat and edit, or you can embed it into, say, a PowerPoint presentation or a Microsoft Word document, so you can make nice uh, documents as well. And Wolfram Alpha will also handle many of the cal calculus calculations we need to do in this class. For example, here's a limit. Uh, let's take the limit of the expression x squared minus 1 divided by x plus 1 uh, as x goes to negative 1, as x goes to negative 1. And it will come back and give me the limit here and even plot it. Again, though, if I ask it to show steps, it will. Uh, you might notice it gives some pretty uh, complicated uh, results here. This is using a rule called L'Hopital's rule to compute this limit, which is a technique we actually don't learn until the second semester of calculus. So the steps here are a little bit crazy. And also do derivatives. Here's a fairly complicated derivative. Let's say I want to take the derivative of, uh, say, x divided by square root of x squared plus 1 with respect to x. And it will come back and give me the derivative and uh, several other things as well, plots, alternate forms, all kinds of uh, fascinating looking mathematical output. You can also do integrals if I want to do a, a definite integral, for example, integrate the function e to the x squared power from x equals 0 to x equals 2. That's a definite integral uh, and it comes back with the approximate answer and it even gives me a graph of the area that's being calculated. I can even uh, integrate definite integrals, say uh, integrate x squared times e to the x, just an indefinite interval, so this is going to be an antiderivative, and it gives me the answer plus constant. If I ask it to show steps, it will show me the work. It's using integration by parts, and uh, the integral of e to the x is e to the x. So these are some many, many things that, it will, so just a short sample of the many things Wolfram Alpha will do. So the best thing you can do to learn Wolfram Alpha is to go into it and just play with it, discover new things. You can try some of the suggested examples, there are examples by topic, and just simply start entering things into the search bar and see what happens. It's a very helpful tool that can really enhance your learning of calculus this semester, and I hope you find it fun and useful.